The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and went to live in Capernaum by the sea, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali, that what had been said through Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sit in darkness have seen a great light on those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death. Light has arisen. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As he was walking by the sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, whom we called Peter and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, come after me and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. And he walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. He called to them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. He went around all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and curing every disease and illness among the people. The gospel of the Lord. Priests and deacons, in the preparation of their homilies, often make reference to only three of the Sunday scripture readings, but there are four. We tend to neglect the psalm following the first reading. It is called the responsorial psalm, meaning that it has been chosen as a response to the first reading. But that makes it sound like a lesser scripture passage, just a response. The Psalms do not have second-class status in the Bible. I'd like to look at the Psalm chosen for today's response, Psalm 27. Psalm 27 is called a Psalm of Confidence, for it expresses a confidence in God and is appropriate between the seasons of Advent and Christmas and Lent. These Sundays are counted as the Sundays after the Epiphany. In Advent, we long for the light of Christ. In Lent, we will enter the dark and stark wilderness, longing for God's forgiveness. But for now, we celebrate the epiphany, God's light, God's revelation, God's showing. For what we had hoped for in Advent is now at hand. As our first reading proclaims, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwell in the land of gloom, a light has shone. There are people who characterize the God of the Old Testament as angry and vengeful, and they welcome the arrival of Jesus because he shows a softening of God's heart toward his people. But Psalm 27 is just one of many texts in the Hebrew scriptures that refute this caricature of God. The psalmist expresses trust and confidence in God, and he longs to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of his life. And it is more than that. 
is not just enough to dwell in God's house. The one praying the psalm longs to see God face to face. No one wants to have face to face experience with a cruel and judgmental God. But in this prayer, we express our longing for God, a God of bountiful generosity. And so the psalmist encourages us to wait for the Lord. The expectation is that the one who longs for God will be satisfied. God does not stand afar off and just observe us, but he satisfies our longing to be with him, and the wait is well worth it. But life, as we all know, is not all sweetness and roses. We detect a real life in the background of this psalm, but it expresses a confidence that no matter what is happening, God is there with us and protecting us and helping us to get through the threats that accompany life's journey. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The psalm is a reminder that God has been present to us before during hard times, and God is present to us now as we face our present struggles. In the gospel, we are told that Jesus heard that Herod had been arrested, that Herod had arrested John the Baptist, the voice that roamed throughout the desert telling the people, prepare the way of the Lord, had been silenced and was now in a prison cell. After John had been silenced, Jesus' voice is heard proclaiming, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus does not run and hide despite the danger that he faced. He took his message to Galilee, which was ruled by Herod. And we hear Matthew quote the prophet Isaiah, the people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. John might be in prison, but you can't imprison the word of God, which brings light to a land of gloom. Jesus teaches, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. God is present and is acting in a new way through his son, Jesus Christ. But in order to receive the message of life that Jesus offers to us, we must all repent. We must change our minds. We must examine how we think and how we act. Do we find ourselves in some ways sitting in darkness, dwelling in a land of gloom? Are we stuck in old ways of thinking, our imagination closed to the new possibilities which God's present can bring to fulfillment? Jesus invites you and me to think differently, to leave behind the ways of the land of gloom. God's kingdom is now. New life is being offered to those who are willing to accept it. As Jesus began his preaching and healing ministry, he realized that he could not do it by himself. And so he invites others to join him. But based on their achievements in their first jobs as fishermen, they might not have much to offer in the service of the Lord. They could bring their skills that they earned as fishermen, patience, hope, and perseverance. But they too had to repent, to put aside their limited ways of thinking, and with Jesus' help, have a change of mind and heart. Jesus called them to be with him and to learn from him all that he could teach them so that someday they too might go out and teach others the good news of the kingdom. You might have to admire their initial enthusiasm and spontaneity, but they were human and their dedication and loyalty would falter, especially when Jesus himself was taken prisoner and executed. Like us, they will need to remember that Jesus' invitation to repent is offered each time that they and we falter as his followers. 
They were disappointed in Jesus because he didn't do things and turn out the way they had hoped for. It often doesn't in life, but Jesus does not give up on them and he does not give up on us. He always welcomes us back when we repent. We can choose gloom and darkness, even when light and life are offered to us. It is our choice. The gospel for today is not only a scripture passage recalling a past event in the lives of Jesus and his disciples. Following Jesus is not a once and for all decision. It must be renewed, often daily, for sometimes we choose to cheat just a little at work or to ignore our neighbor who we know is in need, to close our ears to someone who's asking us for help and not speak or act out our commitment to Jesus. The words of Jesus may be familiar to you and to me, but they are not only an echo of the past, rather they are very much words spoken to you and to me today. Come and follow me, and I will change your life. <laughs> Quiroque me 